Next time on Star Trek The Next Generation. Commander Riker is invaded by an alien parasite. My whole leg just went dead. Their growth rate is doubled. It's attacking his brain and nothing can stop it. Respiration is erratic, pulse grossly irregular, blood pressure almost nil. Can anything save him from a tragic death? I'm on well. Hang on. Find out next time on Star Trek The Next Generation. Hey everybody, Hostrone here with another Star Trek First Edition video for you. So, <laughs> that uh, that intro definitely brings back a few memories from my childhood, that's for sure. But So I got an interesting deck for you today. Looks like a couple of days ago, or last weekend, our uh, MVB played this the D and deck to a second place finish in his local. And there was just something about it that triggered a thought in my mind that he's only using eight seed cards and that if one wanted to be a little cheeky, one could add, like maybe like move this organ theft or remove the quarks isolinear rods and simply like, you know, take the risk against a computer crash and go to 10 seed cards and play with the shades of gray cards. So after doing some looking and some thinking, what I came up with was to use three of the shades of gray cards. So we moved a organ theft over to the draw deck. We then added two more copies of the guy that can download the organ theft, not him. I think it's him. Yes. We added two more copies of Nadira and then that way uh, you still should theoretically have access to an organ theft early enough. Between the three copies in the deck, the three copies of Nadirum, and the four Q's tens, which can just grab you an organ theft. So you have ten cards out of your fifth forty-nine that should be able to get you a turn one organ theft. Okay? Then with the three shades of gray cards, uh, in play, we still have room for 20 dilemmas in the deck. So Michael was going with 22, we go down to 20, but we're getting a bunch of help, and boosting some dilemmas with the Shades of Grey card. So the Shades of Grey, for those of you who don't know, uh, A, B, C, and D, Anguish, Brutality, Cruelty, and Despair. Um, anguish boosts by doubling the requirements of these dilemmas and even if they overcome it by randomly having it those people are stopped and therefore won't contribute to the next dilemma. Brutality doubles the skill requirements of these dilemmas. And lastly Shades of Great Cruelty adds two exobiology to these dilemmas. So, what we've done is we have added in a bunch of those dilemmas in order to create some very interesting dilemma combos. So, what we have is at its base MVB's recent Vidian deck that he played in a local. And then, what we've done is we've made it interesting and unpredictable. No offense, Michael, but the first, your, you know, the, the base version of Michael's deck is extremely just straightforward. There's not really a hook to it. He's literally just playing some Vidians out, hoping his 22 dilemmas hold, and he's just doing submissions. Okay. Um, with this, we add some interestingness. We add unpredictability because with the Shades of Grey cards. Um, you don't have to like reveal them all at once. You can simply reveal them as you need to. So an opponent, you will, like as the game kind of starts and starts to develop, your opponent may not necessarily guess that you have like 
three shades of great cards. They may think you, you know, if you reveal brutality right away, they're going to think, well, that's it. They just got brutality. And so they're not necessarily thinking about what the other ones are doing. And what the other, what, what they all are doing together is they are creating a situation where all of a sudden now an opponent has to be mindful of their exobiology. They have to be worried about when a Barclays might show up and wipe out everyone that's involved. And then with like Menthar Booby Trap, which was, this is a good find in a Vidian deck because of literally the first line, place on ship, it cannot move. So if you can catch an opponent's ship in a Menthar Booby Trap, it cannot move until they get the four engineer, four engineer, because it doubles all requirements and that includes the curing. So it's double medical uh, to get past it after they encounter it. If they have that, it will still stay on there unless they can cure it with four engineer. Now, just randomly having four engineer on a ship is not likely, not impossible, not really outside the realm of possibility for what a deck might just randomly decide to like throw at a mission attempt. But it's not easy. If they also they also have to then have the double medical because we could randomly catch them without double medical, randomly kill an engineer, and then the Menthar booby trap stays. This is relevant because with the Vidians using the Vidian boarding claw, that ship can come in and then claw the booby trapped ship, and that ship cannot move to try to break the claw. Cool. Cool. Uh, Null Space is also pretty good. Um, it's doubled so that it requires four navigation. That is very difficult to just randomly have. And so it can just damage a ship. Uh, I would say only a Borg deck that is interlinking and has navigation on the ship is likely to get through that. What we're also, like I said, we're trying to do is we're adding in exobiology onto Shaka when the walls fell. And a fun little thing that I've come up with is the using, keeping kind of with this like TNG theme, is the arsenal separated, which we can use to set up the Barclays. So when we put this all together, we just have this basic Vidian straightforward deck. It's going to attempt missions. It's going to try to organ theft an opponent. It's going to try to maybe do a two mission win, gets into the alpha quadrant. One of the other slight changes we made to Michael's deck is, is we took Refine Inoculation out and we put Safe Stranded Crew in. Because really what we want to probably do is we probably want to do um, Rebuild Society in the Delta Quadrant and then do one of the Alpha Quadrant Space Missions. Ideally, we want to do Amnesty Talks. And then that gets us to 70, and then we do three organ thefts and get to 100. So we kind of had room with Safe Stranded Crew, in my opinion. This may not be the best decision because we took out a 35-point mission. Um, the other thing you can do is you can do Restock Supplies and then do Amnesty Talks. If your opponent gives you five points somehow, some way, then that opens you up and, and reopens Safe Stranded Crew, right? But what we get is we get a uh, all-consuming evil outside the game to double our armus dilemmas. So we are really what I wanted to do this once I kind of went down this path. I really wanted to like focus on like this Vidian deck with the next generation problems. So we've got Armuses, we've got Barclays, we've got Cytherians, we've got Females Love Interest Garbage Scout, we've got booby traps and null spaces and um, scientific methods and shakas and arsenals and zeldan even so we got mostly the next generation problems here and when we put that all together this is what we come up with so what we come up with then is two four card space combos a pair of dual combos uh, three card dual combos and a pair of three card planet combos and in space these are actually all pretty good um oops i got these backwards uh those got moved somehow okay so 
we have a persistent individuality that's a qualifier the opponent's going to have to have probably seven people or at least five and somehow get through the kills and then they have four and then the ship with those people on it will go on its Ethereum so it's going to lock up your opponent that's going to give your Vadian cruiser or your organ bank the ability to to shoot it and or lock it up with a boarding claw and just start whacking people and then even behind that then we have the booby trap so we have committed an opponent's at least one engineer theoretically hopefully and some other people uh, early on which then makes the booby trap more effective that is probably not going to have the double medical or the four engineer so we can kind of hold a ship in place and then when the ship is held in place by the booby trap it cannot move the garbage scout so then we've essentially locked up three of the opponent's ships with this combo so that's pretty cool the other space combo, we just have an Arbus energy field into a null space. So this combo forces the opponent to bring with enough people and stuff that they're able to do the mission requirements to get past it. Then we hit them with a null space, which will damage the ship. And then hopefully that means then that your Vidian organ bank would be able to come over and finish them off. And even if not, you boarding claw them and you know that they have their mission requirements and the mission attempts, you can start going after those with organ thefts and take away key pieces from the opponent. And then the second half is just a plasma currents into Cytherians. So again, we're making the opponent in space commit lots of personnel to the space mission to, be, to even think about getting through it. Dual combos, it's kind of they're both just kind of basically similar. We have Arsenal separated, which will force at least Cunning greater than 27 to be present, but it will take a bunch of their unique personnel out of the mission attempt. And then hopefully that sets up a doubled Barclays protomorphosis disease. So the opponent's forced to commit, you know, Cunning greater than 27, so probably on average that's going to be like four or five people have to go through in order to have that level of cunning. And then we can kill four or five people with a doubled Barclays Proto Disease. And then what we have is we have an enhanced Shaka behind it. So they need to have two Diplomacy and two Exo and Cunning Greater Than 30 to get through. So what that means in, as a practical matter for the Vidian deck is an arsenal separated will send a couple of unique personnel and set them aside and then hopefully everybody else dies and then you can come in and you can harvest the organs of the uniques that were separated and then the opponent still has now a difficult wall that they have to get through and so of course if one of the separated people has exobiology that's who you target so that you make the Shaka harder, or if they have diplomacy, you can make the Shaka harder to get through. And then in order to keep things different so the opponent can't just get lucky with the right personnel in play, we do vary the back end wall here. So we have the same arsenal into Barclays Proto, but then behind that they need scientific method, which is medical and three science. Okay. At Planet, we're being interesting. Planet, we have an M113 creature, which we use to try to pull out any exobiology if we can in order to set up a Zeldan. The Zeldan also has two exo added to all of its requirements, so they need to have two exo and two treachery, or a Disruptor and two exobiology, or Wesley Crusher and two exobiology, or three exobiology in total. If not, it will kill uh, two away team members who have diplomacy, if any. But then now we have killed at least one exobiology, hopefully. Hopefully killed any ex diplomacy that are there, and thus made our Shaka that much more difficult. If an opponent goes in with very few personnel, then the M113 creature, maybe if there's a ship there with some people that are held behind or an outpost, you have the ability to use the M113 creature to reach and grab a person who's not in the mission attempt 
because you know that your Zeldan is going to hit and your Shock is good. Okay, and if the other planet we have the Vidian, you know, deadly donation, allowing the Vidian to, you know, not have to be on the planet. That gets followed up with a doubled Armus. So if the opponent sends down three people, one's going to stop, two are going to die. If they send down four or more, one's going to stop, two are going to die. And then they're going to encounter a rock people. And rock people is not necessarily an easy dilemma to get through because it requires three different personnel with geology or three personnel with specifically science classification. Which is not going to be something that they just randomly have after going through this, most likely. So that's our dilemma strategy for this deck. Um, as I said before, you know we have this, which will be on that one planet, active, you know, act, being active. Otherwise, you can just take a look at MVB's deck to see kind of how it operates, generally speaking. But the important thing to keep in mind is is that we took the organ theft out of the seed phase in order to kind of make this work. You can always put the deadly or the organ theft back in. If you don't think that you're going to face like computer crash, you can take the quarks isolinear rods out instead. There's a lot of wiggle room here for what you think you're going to face in your meta and so forth. But just doing a quick like shuffle and draw, we have exactly what we need. We, we drew the organ theft guy and barring that we had the Q's tent. So, you know, it, I don't think it's going to be difficult. We also pulled Dareth. So on turn one, um, we can't play any additional personnel or anything. So what if, if we wanted to, um, we do search for spares, obviously is what we're going to do on turn one. And if we wanted to, we could just Q's tent for that organ theft if we need to. But if we don't need to, there's no reason to do anything else, we could just Q's tent for whatever is important for this deck. Um, and I believe that just Q's tenting for the Barzan wormhole is probably what the deck wants to do, or the Genetronic Replicator. Um, all seem like good options, but it looks like uh, Mike put his, his three targets for the organ bank all on the Q's tent, so they would all just come out on your turn one and your Q's tenting and you could, like I said, you can Q's tent for the organ theft if it's relevant, but if not, I assume you probably just grab bars and wormhole and put it into play. Um, otherwise, yeah, I suppose like a D and harvester or the operate wormhole relays are also pretty good. Lower decks is pretty good. I mean, that might be what you do, is you just like play the lower decks or the genetronic. One of those two, most likely. And then from there, you just kind of go with the deck and then on turn two, I mean, you're probably assuming that your opponent's gonna draw like two cards or something like that. So, you know, let's assume that we're gonna draw like two cards or something. And then, yeah, on the very next turn, we're able to free play our medical and then just card to play um, Motura and then Motura can just download Dareth and we get the organ theft and organ harvest out of the deck. And the deck is off and running so. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. That's a, a quick little video here for you uh, where we've taken a Vidian deck that Michael Van Riemann played here last weekend in a local tournament. We've taken it and put a little fun little twist into it. I hope you like it. Feel free to um, go ahead and play play this sometime. Be advised though, if your opponents watch this video, they might be aware of your combos. You may want to like kind of switch things up a little bit, but I mean, one of the things about the combos I create is that even if you know what's coming, it doesn't necessarily help you, you know? It's something that I just do all the time because, I mean, Arsenal separated means that they would have to have, they would know they'd have to have like all universal stuff for Barclays Proto, and that's not gonna be necessarily pretty easy, so. 
And even if they know it's coming, they may not be able to do anything about it. So, anyway, like I said, hope you enjoyed this video. Please like the video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. I like the fact that I still have a small little trickle of, of subscribers coming in. I saw that my last video had a lot of views. I hope that this video has as many or more views. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. May the profits be with you.